So someone in my Discord sent this link to Screen Rant's top 10 LEGO Star Wars sets from 2023. You know Screen Rant, the big company that has over 8 million subscribers on YouTube that usually does top 10s on movies. Yeah, they made a list on what they think is the top 10 best LEGO Star Wars sets from 2023. And I saw this and I was like, wait, when did Screen Rant start dabbling into LEGO Star Wars? And I looked through the list and honestly, it was one of the worst LEGO Star Wars top 10s I have ever seen. So I wanted to make a video about it. I don't mean any hate towards Screen Rant at all. I used to watch their top 10 videos all the time even though my channel with under 10,000 subscribers probably wouldn't throw any negativity their way at all. I just wanted to put that out there. So here we have the top 10 Star Wars Lego sets of 2023. 2023's Lego Star Wars line is quite impressive, with sets inspired by the Mandalorian, Ahsoka, and the Return of the Jedi's 40th anniversary, blah blah blah. And then actually hopping right into the list, at the number 10 spot, they have the Emperor's Throne Room diorama. And this is a bit strange to me, because I do think this was the best diorama released this year, and it's actually probably one of the best dioramas Lego has made so far, because as we know, dioramas are pretty expensive, especially for the piece count, and out of all the dioramas LEGO has made, this one has relatively the closest price to piece count ratio, so obviously that's going to appeal to a lot of people because one complaint about the diorama sets is that they're too expensive, so this one is relatively the best bang for your buck, and some reason they put it at the number 10 spot, and again it's arguably one of the best dioramas LEGO has made. And then on at the number 9 spot, they have the MIDI scale executor super star destroyer, which I actually can stand by. I think this is a great display model for the price and the piece count. They say the Executor Super Star Destroyer is an impressive mini-scale model of Darth Vader's imposing capital ship featured during the Rebellion's attack on the second Death Star, and it says one of the best elements featured in the set is the to-scale Star Destroyers on either side. I mean, yeah, like I said, I can stand by this placement, but the rest of them, I definitely can't. And at the number 8 spot, they have the Ghost and Phantom 2, and this is when you can kind of start to see how I said this list feels like it was just randomly generated with random sets, because in my eyes, this is definitely a top 5 set from this year, and I think a lot of people can stand by that too, because this is clearly better than the 2014 Ghost. It includes impressive minifigures and a very, very impressive build. The only downside is that it's a bit pricey, but I'm pretty sure a lot of people can stand by the fact that this set should be higher up on this list. And then they just give a brief description of the set with no real reason of why they put it at the number 8 spot, because it's clearly a lot better than the sets that are to come on this list. And then at the number 7 spot, they have the T6 Jedi Shuttle. And out of all the sets that were released in the second half of this year, I'd say this one probably did get the most flack, mainly because a lot of people think it's overpriced and because it's a lot smaller than the older version, which was cheaper. Although with inflation adjusted, they are relatively the same price. So the price doesn't really bother me that much. And it has a very, very solid minifigure lineup. However, the only downside this set has, which is a very, very big downside, is that on the bottom side, it is just all gray panels. And when you actually spin the wings around, it doesn't look that good, especially compared to the older one, which had some detailing on the bottom side. And this was definitely a complaint for me and a lot of people with this set. And due to that, I don't think this set should be over the ghost in any ways because I think the ghost build doesn't have any flaws at all, although this one has one major flaw which is the bottom side just looks flat out ugly. And then onto the number 6 spot, they have the UCS Venator. Like come on, what sets would be over the UCS Venator that were released this year? I mean really the only reason I can think of that they put it this low on the list is just because of the price, although $600 UCS sets have been pretty common for a few years now, so I don't really think the price is a negative thing in that many people's eyes considering how large the set is and just how detailed and awesome it is. And in the description again, they just give a brief summary of the set with no mention of how we waited over 10 years for this and no mention of how it's widely considered to be a top 5 UCS set of all time. And then onto the number 5 spot, they had the Mandalorian Fang Fighter versus TIE Interceptor. I mean, this was a good set, but I mean, come on, is it really better than the Venator? And it's kind of weird because I sort of agree with this placement. I would probably rank this set as the number 5 best set from this year. However, I would not rank it over the Venator or probably the Ghost either. But regardless, it's still a good set. They said inspired by the Mandalorian Season 3, blah 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 blah, very cool 2-pack bundle. Coming in at just about 500 pieces per ship, this particular model would be a great gift for the holidays along with updated minifigures for both the Mandalorian, Din Djarin, and Bo-Katan Grease. And it seems like the idea of these sets being a great Christmas gift is kind of the theme towards like the latter half of the list. But other than that, I literally cannot find anything as to why they rank these sets where they rank them, because they literally don't explain anything about their placements other than the fact that they could be a great holiday gift. And then on to the number 4 spot, they had the indoor speeder chase diorama. And yeah, I have no idea why they put this over the Emperor's Throne Room, because one, the Emperor's Throne Room is way more iconic, and I feel like a list from a company like this would probably favor the more iconic sets over the actual good ones. And two, is that the trees look really weird on this set, which kind of hinders its display value in my opinion. I love everything else about this set, especially the speeders. I think these are some of the highest quality speeders LEGO has made. However, the way they did the trees is just kind of weird to me, because obviously they can't make the trees super tall like they are in indoor 
lower so they sort of tried to just like cut the trees off at the top and kind of make it look like they just keep on going and it just looks really strange i think the least they could have done was cover it up with more leaves but again everything else about this diorama is really nice it's just those trees really take away some display value for me they say another exciting return of the jedi model is the indoor speeder chase diorama featuring luke and leia's pursuit of an imperial scout trooper through the forest moon of indoor the movement depicted with this new diorama format is quite good that's their only reasoning for this placement is that it's quite good likewise the black base with a quote from the scene itself has become a classic staple of lego star wars new diorama models and it's quite a lot of fun to see with this smaller yet very detailed star wars model so again all they said is it's quite good and they put this at the number four spot over the emperor's throne room and then onto the number three spot they had the new republic e-wing versus shin hattie starfighter and i do agree this is one of the best sets from this year i definitely think it's better than the tie interceptor and fang fighter set however i don't think it's quite good enough to be the number three spot i still think that probably belongs to the ghost regardless this is still a very great model and i'm honestly surprised to see them put it high up on this list just because these vehicles are not super popular to the general public they say another two ship bundle inspired by ahsoka one ship is the e-wing seen in the show's premiere blah 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 this set also comes with impressive minifigures of shin hattie balen skull morgan elizabeth as well as a pilot for the new republic e-wing as a set featuring nearly all the show's primary villains new republic e-wing versus shin hattie starfighter is a must-have for lego star wars collectors and i think that's interesting they said this is a must-have for lego star wars collectors and they didn't say anything along those lines for the tie interceptor and mandalorian fang fighter and that was the first lego star wars set to include a tie interceptor in over 15 years yet instead they said the e-wing versus shin hattie starfighter is a must-have for collectors and then at the number two spot they had the ucs x-wing and i actually can stand by this i would rank this set as the second best set this year and then put the venator at the number one spot and i think this set is very very underrated i think a lot of people looked over it because it was the third ucs x-wing lego had made and people were definitely expecting another set for may 4th this year and then we just got another x-wing but if you look past that this set is actually very very good and it's easily the best x-wing model lego has made they said a new edition of lego star wars ultimate collector series the x-wing starfighter is a bigger model showcasing the iconic rebellion starfighter first seen in a new hope the model also comes with minifigures of both luke skywalker and r2d2 it's easily one of the most classic lego star wars sets currently available for purchase see and they get some reasoning for this being at the number two spot and that is because it is a classic set however again they put the emperor's throne room at the number 10 spot and it's arguably just as much of a classic set or a classic scene as this set and then on to the number one spot i kid you not they put the 332nd ahsoka's clone trooper battle pack and this was definitely what surprised me the most when i saw this list i mean i was at least expecting them to probably put the x-wing at the number one spot but no out of all the sets from this year they chose the 332nd clone troopers battle pack which was probably the most controversial set released this year because of the clone troopers included with their helmet holes and then captain vaughn being advertised as having an exclusive helmet there was just a lot of controversy around this set and they put it at the number one spot and even if there wasn't any controversy around this set who would rank a battle pack as the best set of this year they say ahsoka's 332nd clone trooper battle pack is another very exciting set celebrating lego's 20 years of clone war sets and this might be a little too nitpicky on my part but this part is wrong right here they're acting like this is lego's 20th year anniversary of clone war sets but lego has only been making clone war sets since 2008 when in reality this is just the 20th anniversary of the clone wars because the clone wars cartoon came out in 2003 and again it seems like a business that is all about movies and tv shows would know that but for some reason they're claiming that lego has been making clone war sets for 20 years and that's just not true and then it says featuring a smaller hovercraft build i mean obviously it's a swamp speeder but this is a gpu list so i'm not gonna hate on them too much for that the true draw is the four minifigures of the clones from the 332nd company complete with their repainted helmets in honor of ahsoka tano herself as one of lego's cheaper and smaller star wars sets released in 2023 it would certainly make a great stocking stuffer so a great stocking stuffer is the reason you put this set as the number one lego star wars set of 2023 so again it just doesn't make any sense it feels like this list was randomly generated i don't know how many times i have to say that throughout this video and i mean honestly i do have a lot of respect for screen rant they're one of the most og top 10 youtube channels however if they're going to keep on making lego star wars list i think they need to put some more thought into them let me know what you guys think about this list down in the comments below and if you want to check out more of my videos you can see the link in screen right now